Hey, what's up guys? It's Bakes here for shelf number 10 of my shelf by shelf series. Um, hopefully this video goes a little bit better than shelf number 9 considering we're on the same level and I'm still down on my knees and it hurts to be down here and it's a bit of a hard shelf to do but as I said hopefully this episode goes alright. So starting off on shelf number 10 we have a slasher from the 80s called the Prowler which is a pretty popular one. I know a lot of people like it and as do I. Um, it's probably most noted for having really good practical effects and it does. Um, the effects in that movie are really good. Next up we have Hitchcock Psycho. I mean what can be said about Psycho? It's a classic, it's great, really good. Um, and now time to get into the underrated sequels. Psycho 2, which I might even like more than the OG, which is almost crazy to say, but um, yeah, Psycho 2 is awesome. There's just something about it, super enjoyable, and Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates in all of them. He does a really good job. Um, Psycho 3 which is probably the most traditional slasher of them all. I mean, it still has thriller elements like um, the earlier two films, but probably most traditional to a slasher. And Psycho 4, which is definitely the weakest, but still really enjoyable. Here's a goofy one. Psycho Beach Party. Um, as I said, it's goofy, but it knows it's goofy and it doesn't take itself too seriously. This movie is actually a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And speaking of movies, that is fun. Psycho Gore Man. Um, remember waking up on Saturday mornings and Power Rangers and, you know, shows like that would be on and you'd sit in front of the TV and eat your cereal and whatever. This movie is that, but it's a horror movie as well and it's just awesome. Um, check out Psycho Gore Man. Uh, the American Pulse Trilogy. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a fan of any of these movies. Um, the first one is the best of the three, but... Um, you know, that's nothing to really praise, because as I said, I'm not a fan of any of them, to be honest. Next up, Pumpkinhead. Um, I love Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead is so fun. Um, yeah, just what a cool creature feature. Uh, Puppet Master box set. It has the first five films. Um, I'm not going to break down them individually. Uh, the Puppet Master films are pretty fun. Um, who's my favourite puppet from the series? Um, you know, you obviously can't go past Blade, but I also really like um, the Leech Woman, uh, the doll that spits up leeches. I don't know, I just like that. Uh, the Purge. Uh, it's easier to sort of forget about the first movie. This movie was a bit more grounded with its concept. Um, obviously, the concept is pretty cool, and, um, you know, it's grown into something more, but... The first movie, I mean, was pretty grounded and um, not a bad movie. As they went on, you know, they got a bit out of hand. Um, the Purge Anarchy, I didn't mind. Um, you know, it goes into a bit more of an action movie, but not bad. Um, again, Purge Election Year, it's a step down again, but it's not unwatchable. You know, it's definitely better than um, the Forever Purge and the First Purge, and um, they're over in my Fs further up, so... If you want to know my thoughts on them, you'll have to go to a earlier installment of my Shelf by Shelves. Python. Um, this is like the exact type of movies I'd pick up when I was like five or six in my video store. And I'd watch these movies like back to back all the time. And um, it's not a great movie, but it's enjoyable. Um, like I always say, I grew up like religiously watching Anaconda and films like that. So um, yeah, that's right up my alley too. Quarantine, the American remake of Wreck. Um, not as good as Wreck, but, you know, it's obviously not bad. Quatermass and the Pit. Um, I really like the first two acts of this movie and the mystery, but as it goes, I just feel like it doesn't really amount to anything that I really care for. So, yeah. Queen of the Damned. Um, everyone hates this movie, and as do I. Not a good film. A Quiet Place, um, yeah, this is like a modern classic pretty much, um, everyone knows this movie, super enjoyable, I remember f the first time I saw this movie in cinemas, I went with a cold, and um, I needed to sneeze and cough 
endlessly during the whole playing of the movie and I felt terrible. Um, I was just holding them all in. <laughs> it was really bad. Um, Quiet Place Part 2. It's still wrapped. I just haven't watched it since getting it, but I have seen this movie and honestly, it's a really good sequel. Uh, the Soska Sisters remake of Rabid. Um, yeah, pretty enjoyable. Not too bad. Alright, let me just scoot back for a second. Because as I said, down here on this level, it's a bit hard. Um, especially now, you guys would know I have trouble when I get into the corner there. So, let's see how I go. Raging Cajun Redneck Gators. Fun movie. Um, it's... CGI fest, you know, it's low budget, but it's fun. It's like wear gators, which, you know, you might not have guessed by just the cover and whatever, but yeah, it's like people turning into alligators. It's not bad. Random Acts of Violence. I really liked this movie. I thought it was awesome. Um, I really love just getting a modern standalone slasher. Um, you know, we get like more slasher sequels and everything nowadays, but just its own thing it's um this movie was pretty enjoyable the weakest part was the third act i didn't like how it ended but otherwise cool movie raptor um yep a movie about a raptor that is killing people and it's really low budget the movie's really bad but it's fun Oops. rasputin the mad monk uh, with christopher lee hammer horror film Ravenous. Um, I know a lot of people really like this movie. Um, it. I can't remember where it takes place. It's like back in the old days and like I think like Civil War time sort of thing. Um, cannibal movie. And it has a lot of things that I really would like on paper, but I'm not the biggest fan of this one. Maybe I should check it out again for a rewatch soon. Razorback. Um, Killer Ball movie. An Australian film. Um, yeah. Ready or Not, um, another one I have seen, it's just still wrapped. Um, fun movie, fun movie, I'm really excited to give that one a rewatch. The Reanimator Trilogy, um, yeah, these movies are just so much fun. Um, the first film is not my favourite, um, still really enjoyable, um, but I love Bride of Reanimator. Um, I think Bride is just awesome, it turns up the fun um the effects i don't know it's it's easily a little bit more over the top than the first one but i love it for that um but i'm not a big fan of beyond reanimator the reaping um i don't remember this movie too well honestly i don't think it was very good um we were speaking about quarantine before but here we got the original spanish films uh this is the whole franchise so wreck the og um, pretty good. Wreck 2, not too bad if I remember right. Um, Wreck 3 and 4 are surprisingly not that bad. Um, they're not great, but they're not that bad. Red Dragon. Um, I actually really like Red Dragon, I'm not going to lie. Um, like, I do like Silence of the Lambs more, but this is definitely up there. I think it's like... I think this one gets way overlooked. Um, Red Dragon's awesome. Red Eye with uh, Rachel McAdams, Killian Murphy, directed by Wes Craven. Yep. I couldn't remember if he directed it or just produced or something, but um, more of a thriller. Takes place on a plane. Um, and it flies by as well. This movie's not very long, but it's good. Good movie. Scooting back a little bit more. Red State, um, a film by Kevin Smith. Uh, the way this movie started, um, you know, where they get. Uh, trapped in these cages and it looks like it's sort of going to turn into something really grimy torture cult sort of thing I was like okay yeah I can get into this um, but then the way it ends up going I, I wasn't a fan Red Water um, low budget killer shark movie um, for a low budget killer shark movie I think it was made for TV as well um, the effects are actually pretty good, and the movie's not too bad. It's quite enjoyable. I used to watch this one a lot growing up as well. Um, the scene where the chick's on the bridge and it jumps out and eats her, I love it. And the part where the grandpa and grandson are fishing, and yeah, that scene scarred me when I was younger. Um, Redneck Zombies, trauma film. 
uh, yeah, if you know Troma, you know what you're getting. Regression. Um, again, it's been a while since I've seen this one, so it's not too fresh in my mind. Um, the same with Rekill. Uh, it's been a while since i last seen this one, but I remember not really liking it. The Relic. Um, I know a lot of people really like this movie. I kind of think it's okay. Not too bad for a creature feature. There's definitely better ones, but... Um, you know, I'm not mad that people like it. Um, it's just not really my thing. Um, but this Relic... Um, not related in any way, just same name. Um, an Australian film. I've done a review of this movie, so if you want to know my thoughts, check it out. I love this movie. I think it's great. I think it's highly underrated. Check out Relic. Um, I feel like if you like a movie like um, The Barbadook or something, you'll like Relic. Um, another Hammer movie, The Reptile. Um, disappointing. Like, this movie, I feel like should be a lot more fun and, um, you know, people turning into snakes and everything, but it doesn't quite hit. Oh, I'm starting to feel it. I'm right tucked up in the corner. My arms are killing me. All right. Push through. Got to do it. Um, Requiem for a Dream, um, more of a thriller slash drama, um, and I'm not going to lie, I'm not the biggest fan of this movie, I know a lot of people love Requiem for a Dream, but not me. Rest Stop Dead Ahead, um, this movie's not great, but there's some scenes in it that make me laugh, um, they're unintentionally funny, um, but either way, I enjoy it because I get to kind of laugh at it. <laughs> Um, watched this one for the first time the other night, uh, right at your door. Um, very similar to a movie like Contagion, where it's not really horror, it's just more of like a horrific situation, and, um, you know, that's sort of where the fear and all that comes in. Um, it was okay, I wasn't a big fan. Uh, the original Japanese Ring, um, pretty solid, good movie. Um, the Ring 2 has its moments, um, but overall, yeah, not as good as the first. Um, Ring Zero Birthdays, uh, again, a step down, has some moments, um, but overall, not not one I'm jumping to, you know, watch very often. Um, now, the American Ring, uh, this is my favourite out of all the Ring movies. I genuinely think this movie's awesome, uh, good film. Uh, the Ring 2, um, not very good, but not unwatchable, just, yeah, just there. Um, one that has grown on me a lot. By all means, it's not a good movie, but Rings. Um, I remember I went and saw this one in cinemas, and it didn't impress me, but, you know, I had a good time. I was there with mates, and, you know, we got a good laugh, and we were entertained at least. But re-watching it, it's still not a good movie, but, again, I have a good time. I laugh. It's kind of fun. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to sit myself in this corner because I'm like right tucked up. Uh, the right. Um, I thought this one had a pretty interesting start and it sort of changed the formula of these type of paranormal demon possession movies, but then um, it sort of fell back into formula in the third act, so that was a little bit disappointing. Uh, Roadkill, um, that's what it's known as here in Australia at least, uh, probably better known as Joyride. Fun movie, Paul Walker, um, Steve Zorn, Zorn, is that how you say his last name? I love him in movies, most people will know him as the dad from Diary of Olympic Kid. Roadkill 2, um, a lot of people shit on this one, I actually really like Roadkill 2. Um, it's not as good obviously, but... Fun movie still. Here we have the Rocky Horror Picture Show and Shock Treatment, the sequel that no one knows about, um, but Rocky Horror Picture Show. I actually went and saw the live musical um, about a month or two ago. That was my first ever musical and I loved it. I had a great time. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of the movie to want to go and see the musical. Um, Shock Treatment has like a few good parts in it, not the biggest fan of it. Rogue, um, as I've said so many times, I grew up watching animal horror movies and this was my favourite killer crocodile movie. Um, a lot of people will point to 
Lake Placid as their favourite or whatever, but Rogue was mine, and um, I think it's genuinely better than just a killer crocodile movie. I think there's so many other layers to it that makes it awesome. Um, another movie called Rogue, um, it's like these, I don't know, like search and rescue mercenaries sort of people off in Africa and uh, they get attacked by lions. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Rosemary's Baby, a classic, but I actually didn't own this movie for the longest time and I got a chance to pick it up and rewatched it not too long ago, but pretty enjoyable. Um, yeah, it's a classic, obviously. I love the creepy moments of like watching the other people walk around in the back um, background of the apartment. The Ruins, um, again, what a cool movie. I really like this movie and I love just um, nature gone wrong and it's more like plants and all that instead of animals in this one, but it's cool. Rapture, um, wasn't a big fan of this movie. I, th I think I was sort of expecting something different, so maybe that sort of hurt my opinion on it, but whatever. The Sacrament, um, found footage, cult movie based on a true story. Um, really entertaining. Yeah, good movie. Okay. Um... I'm trying to figure out how to sit. Sorry, guys. Saint Maud. Um, I loved Saint Maud. I, I know a lot of people did, but this was really up there for me. Um, it's not a long movie, but still, it just flew by, and I probably could have watched like another hour of it. Honestly, I was loving Saint Maud, and it's not even like a fast-paced movie. Honestly, it's just super entertaining. I really enjoyed it. Um, Salem's Lot. Um, I'm not going to lie, not the biggest fan of this one. Um, obviously a made-for-TV movie. I had to watch it in two parts. I couldn't watch it all in one sitting. Um, if you haven't seen... Um, what's his name? The one that did... Uh, what's the name of the show? Midnight Mass by Mike Flanagan. Yeah, I feel like it's a very similar story. Um, obviously he's done his own little spin on it, but I much prefer that one. Salo. Um, or the 120 Days of Sodom. I've done a review of this movie. It's my most watched video on my channel. Um, and I was sort of lost for words on my <laughs> review of it. I'm surprised that many people have watched it. Um, because this movie, I don't really have a drive to watch it again. It's just... Um, yeah, I had to look at pe other people's comments and reviews on IMDb. And they're like, oh, like... Um, so I'll pull Salo out again since we're still talking about it. A lot of people were like, oh, it's a... It's actually a very smart movie and blah. I don't know. I just I don't want to watch people, you know, being abused in that sort of way and I don't know. I couldn't find any merit to it. It was just gross. Um Satan's Little Helper. This movie is fun as fuck. If you haven't seen Satan's Little Helper, um fuck, find time because this movie's like it's low budget. It's cheap. It's about this kid who plays this game called Satan's Little Helper. Then Satan actually rocks up and he thinks it's still part of the game and he starts doing all this fucked up shit. It's awesome. Alright, and last little franchise to close off this shelf, the Saw franchise. The OJ Saw. Awesome movie. Love it. Saw 2, which is probably my second favourite in the franchise. I know a lot of people are split on Saw 2, but I really do like it. Um, Saw 3, which I know a lot of people would consider their favourite. Um, I actually don't really like this one. I kind of find it to be a bit boring. It's the last of the Saw movies, um, for a while at least, that take themselves seriously. Um, and I'm not going to lie, Saw 4, 5, 6, and 7 sort of all blend together. So, Saw 4. Saw 5. Saw 6. I think 6 is the one that I actually kind of think is pretty decent again. And Saw 7. Um, as I said, from Saw 4 onwards, you're kind of just watching them for the traps. Um, as I said, they sort of all blend together from there on, and story-wise, they're not as compelling, but yeah, either way. Alright, there we go, guys. Finished with Shelf 10. We have 1, 2, 3 more installments of my Shelf by Shelf series to go. Um, yeah, again guys, I want to apologize for shaky camera work and
complaining but as I said when I'm down on my knees like this it's sort of hard and especially when I'm tucked up in this corner between the couch and the wall and yeah it's hard yeah thanks guys for joining me again and I'll see you for another video soon peace